Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 29th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Sundwalten, Norway. And we got a new zero day vulnerability in 64 bit Windows 10 and Windows Server 2016. So, the most recent all patched versions that can lead to privilege escalation. The vulnerability lies in the Windows Task Scheduler and it is associated with the handling of advanced local procedure calls or ALPC. Now, the proof of concept that has been released that's fully functional works on Windows 10 in 2016 with 64 bits. It has a few hard-coded parameters for these specific operating systems, but it's very possible that the same vulnerability is exploitable in a wider range of Windows operating system versions. The way the exploit works is that an attacker who already has to have normal user access to the system has to create a hard link from Windows Tasks, which is the directory that's being used by the scheduler to an arbitrary file that the attacker has read access to. And then essentially the task scheduler will rewrite the DACL, the discretionary access control list for this file for the attacker. Kevin Baman did a real great job in his blog to sort of go over the details of this exploit. He even set up a GitHub repository with the actual source code. The original author only set up a GitHub repository with a raw file. So probably you want to check out that annotated version of Kevin's in order to learn more about how this particular exploit works. In the show notes, I'll link to the CERT CC announcement about this flaw. It has links to Kevin's blog as well as to the GitHub repository with the original exploit code. And then there are certain applications that probably were never really intended to be connected to the open internet. One such application is Octoprint. Octoprint is installed typically on a Raspberry Pi in order to remote control 3D printers. But today we got a note from Kalidarasu Santhresakan who observed that there are many of these Octoprint systems connected to the internet and easily reachable without authentication. He counted a total of 3000 systems connected to the internet they apparently do allow not just the downloading of 3D print files, which of course could leak intellectual property, but they also allow uploading or replacing of print files, which then of course could be used to modify anything that's being printed with this particular printer. An uploaded file, of course, could easily cause a safety issue depending on the part being printed and how, for example, a sudden change in dimensions could affect the functionality of the part. And if you are using a certificate that was signed by Symantec, then time is running out and the latest evidence is that the latest developer version of Firefox will no longer trust your certificate. This is of course all due to the fallout that Symantec had in particular with Google over a year ago and yes, you should have had enough time by now to look for a new certificate authority. Mozilla created a bugzilla entry collecting all affected sites. There are still some large name brand sites in this list. So if you start seeing some certificate warnings pop up for these sites in the near future, double check the certificate and check if it was signed by Symantec. I still wouldn't recommend just blindly trusting these certificates. And then thanks to David for a correction about yesterday's story regarding Fortnite. Apparently the real problem here is in part that Epic, the creator of Fortnite, does not distribute Fortnite via the Google Play Store to avoid some of the fees being charged there. So they're instead 
deploying it directly, which of course does avoid some of the security protections that come with distributing it via the Google Play Store. Also, Epic has released a patched version that's no longer vulnerable. They just would have liked to actually have the details about the vulnerability released later or not at all. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. My internet connectivity may be a little bit iffy the next couple of days. So don't worry if you don't see a podcast, but hopefully I'll have the next one ready for you tomorrow. Thanks.